Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome as always. Thank you, John. Uh, this past Sunday, we had an interesting thing take place here on campus where we had a couple of gentlemen that I were... I don't call them gentlemen. Keep going. A <laughs> <laughs> couple of people. A couple of guys. A couple of guys that were at our gates of our entrance coming into the church, uh, trying to antagonize the church, trying to get some some uh, reaction from the church because they want to monetize and mm -hmm. make money off the church. And mm -hmm. I've been thinking about that is why would people use the church to make money and why would they want to antagonize the people of our church who come to worship, who come to hear God's word, to come to kind of get away from everything. And then we have these guys that are here antagonizing for the sole purpose of making money. And it reminds me, and you correct me where it's at, I don't know where exactly, where in Acts there was somebody who was wanting to use the Holy Spirit to monetize. And it reminded me a little bit about that. Uh, what I really appreciate is that you actually went out there and, and spoke to the, the person and uh, as a true shepherd would. But what are your thoughts about people that want to mon use the church to, for their own financial gain? You know, there, there are already enough pastors who do that. So to be honest with you, the fact is that there have been people from the very beginning who have attempted to profit in some way or another from the, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit, from the ministry. And so that's what was taking place, you know, in, in the book of Acts. You see this one who approaches uh, the apostle Peter and he had seen that by the laying on of hands that, that the Holy Spirit had been bestowed. And, and so he said, um, you know, uh, I want to have this power. And that's when the Apostle Peter said, your, your, uh, your money perish with you because you sought to purchase the gift of the Spirit. And so there's, there's been people who have been attempting to monetize um, uh, religion from the very beginning, John. You know that, I know that. And so that's what was taking place. These, these two fellas who showed up this last Sunday had been here you know, a couple of weeks before, they are antagonizing. They, they've gone to other uh, locations in our area, and uh, you know, for for whatever purpose, they they antagonize the people and all, and then they post it so that they'll get hits, and then eventually, as they get their clicks, they they make a certain amount of money. And so, why do they do that? Because religion is profitable. You know, the attitude that some people have is that religious people. Um, you know, are greedy because I approached and I, what I mean by this, uh, by that is this: I, I did approach you. You were with me when I approached him and I asked him, "Why are you doing this?" And he began to make some gibberish sounds to uh, try and mock me. Which I, you know, I'm a I'm a man who has four children and I have grandchildren. So when you act like a child, it doesn't do anything <laughs> to me. It it does it didn't didn't bother me. You know, I just saw him as just a, a large child in, in need of discipline. That's all he is. He's, he certainly uh, isn't a man. He's, he's more of, a, of a, a, a baby boy with a beard. <laughs> so when he tried to make sounds to antagonize me, and, and I, I seem to remember, I don't remember the entire conversation. It was so quick, but I had asked him, why are you here? And he made noises and all. Um, it just gave me an opportunity to share a little bit about the gospel, which is a great opportunity. Apparently, he has a number of followers. Why not share those things with him? So why did why do they do that? Well, there's a demonic spirit that is uh, it's exposing itself uh, today. Uh, it is um, is it, it seems to me, and I've used this phrase. It's not something that I've coined, but uh, Satan took his mask off. Mm -hmm. He's very open in his hatred for and his attempt to undermine, belittle, and uh, re remove the credibility of the body of Christ. And, and that's what this guy is. He's under the, under the influence of the God of this age. And, and it, this is demonic. Right. And because it's demonic, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. See, that's the problem I'm having overall, is that people see things taking place in our culture and immediately they're trying to use carnal weapons, you know, to 
to, to thwart the efforts of the enemy, John. Just yesterday I was speaking to a, uh, a local <coughs> excuse me, councilman who was sharing with me about some of the things related to the city that he, he serves in. He, I ran into him at, the, uh, at one of the local uh, pharmacies and we had an interesting conversation, very interesting. But we began to discuss that and he was sharing with me how he had been in a particular church. He says where the pastor has basically become, he said, a, a militant activist. And mm -hmm. so he was talking about that and I said, and we talked about how things could be changed. Now this is a government official who's telling me that uh, you know there are things that he is seeing in the church he once attended that were disturbing to him. And I think that that's, that happens mm -hmm. in a lot of places throughout the nation because what we, we are doing is we're seeing bad and we're wanting to to cure the bad and that we need to we need to be aware we need to do the things that are necessary but we need to remember this and this is what he and I talked about and this is what I what I shared with him because he is a Christian and so I told him I said listen I said um, yeah we need to we need to be aware we need to do the things that are necessary but we also need to remember that that we're in a spiritual war and so that's what this is this fella just basically standing there to mock and to cause problems to people coming into church. I mean, this is supposed to be a refuge. This is supposed to be a place where they can have peace and they can be recharged because they're out there, you know, in battle every day in one form or another. And the church is a place to equip the saints. And, and, and so for him to come and his friend, his compatriot to to antagonize, to make noises at, to challenge people, or to do whatever he's doing. It's demonic, mm -hmm. and so the answer to that is what we did. I mean, some of the guys went and it was warm, so they were giving him water to drink yes. and, and ministering to him the way that Christians ought to. So I don't see him as my enemy. I don't see those kinds of people as my enemy necessarily. I, I, I know that they're, uh, they're held captive by the enemy. Mm -hmm. They're under the sway of the enemy. They're under the sway of the, of the uh, the period that we're living in, the demonic times, right. because Paul said in the last days that, that, that people will give heed to deceiving spirits. He's speaking concerning in these last days demonic things that are taking place. They give heed to these things. They're listening to these things, and that's what's happening, mm -hmm. John. So the sway that uh, he is, the, the influence, the sway that is being exerted upon him is demonic, and his flesh yields to it, so he does those things. So yeah, that's that's common. People make money off the church in one way or another, including bad pastors. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. I like what you you tied it in perfectly with your message on Sunday, to be ready, mm -hmm. and to be prepared, and to be always be ready mm -hmm. in season, out of season, and what a great practical application right after yeah, you taught it, that. It and so I was able to I, I appreciated that to see that in action. So I thank you, Pastor. I just wanted to get your feedback on that, and and it's sad to see happen, but we pray for them and even offer them a drink of water in sure, the name of, of Jesus and, and give them the gospel yeah. uh, and even directions to the church. Yeah, oh yeah, and the times of service, <laughs> the times 8.30 of service. and 10.45 a.m., you know, yeah, so, they're more than welcome to come. Amen. I'd love them to hear um, the message of the gospel. They've, they've broad brushed us. They've tried to make us seem like we're the enemy and we're not. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're not. We, we want to help the society. We want to be salt. We want to be light. We want to care for people that's what the church does and you know any you know they posted it and there are people making comments about us people who don't know me because these are just ignorant people they they just are uh, they're lost they're in need of Christ and um, they don't have the courage to come and speak to people like me they hide behind their little screens and furiously type their angry words but in fact, they're just miserable, lost people who need the Lord. And mm -hmm. so rather than us getting angry at them, which is easy to do because this guy was mocking, he was making noises, he was not talking. And, and I let him know, I said, listen, I said, you know, apparently you don't want to answer mm -hmm. any questions. You're asking, you know, who are, I ask, who are you, etc. And he makes noises and things. So if he has some uh, mindless followers who think that that's entertainment, you know, those people need the Lord too, and that's why I invite them to church. And if you want, come and speak to me, and I'm more than willing to talk to you about your your perceptions of us, our church, who I am. I have no problem mm. with that. Pastor, thank you so much for sharing that. And, and, uh, and the message that you gave, again, 
you know, right before that and then even right after that. And then again, showing a great practical application, you know, and that's the importance of being in God's word, coming to church, being part of a fellowship, being part of worship. And so this is a segue to invite our church family to our Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m. as you're taking us through the book of Romans. Yep, we're in chapter 8. Chapter 8. Oh, that's a good chapter. Mm -hmm. Invite your friends and family to come out and join us. And then again on, on uh, Sunday mornings, 8.30 and 10.45. Great opportunity to come worship and hear God's Word and join in fellowship and uh, and be refreshed by God's Word. Amen. So we invite you guys to come on out. Pastor David, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and God bless you.